Hi, welcome back to the uh, Angry Cider Garage. Uh, today we're going to continue um, our, uh, our adventure on the um, CNC machine. I, um, you'll see in the video, I started to do some electronics. Um, behind the scenes, I paused for about a month uh, to figure things out. I thought it was going to be pretty straightforward. Um, ended up being um, a little bit more hassle than I thought. Um, I had not much information out on the internet. Um, so I tried to find, you know, different resources, um, actually reached out to the manufacturer, Young Yang. Um, they were actually very helpful. Um, I should have done this sooner, but they sent me everything that I needed. So that helped uh, kind of complete the wiring. Um, I'll actually show you some of the video I did before, um, and then we'll uh, also walk through um, ultimately how I have things wired. Um, it's not going to be probably for everybody. I'll probably end up redoing it uh, as soon as I get this running. Um, I'm probably going to wire it with a, uh, replace the controller with a, a Masso controller. Um, so I've started off with the um, Mach 4 5 or dash V uh, CNC controller that um, you can get with this particular machine. It's, it was the actual cheapest option. Um, so for me, I took it on as just a, a challenge to see if I could get it to work. Um, so I'll, I'll ultimately get it working. Um, we'll see that as well. Um, but again, I'll, I'll probably end up replacing it with a, a massive controller. Um, this one actually connects with Mach 3. Um, I've got it running. Uh, I personally don't like Mach 3. I used it, you know, years ago um, on kind of an initial CNC machine that I built. Um, I'll show you a picture of that here. Um, Again, that was a long time ago. I, I just think things have gotten, you know, much better as far as CNC controllers. Um, and you don't necessarily need to be wired to a computer anymore, which is why I'm looking at the, the Masso controller. Um, so um, come on, take a look. I'll, uh, I'll walk you through, you know, all the, all the wiring I did. Um, I'll also, um, I've created some schematics uh, of each of the sections. So I've got a schematic on... Uh, my power distribution, I've got a schematic on connecting, you know, e-stops and the stepper drivers to the stepper motors and the controller. Um, then I've got a schematic on uh, how I did all my limit switch and e-stop um, wiring. Um, I'm sure there's things I did wrong. Um, it's working. You know, let me know. I'm open to criticism. So, you know, leave a comment um, and I'll, uh, uh, I'll make sure to get it corrected. Um, and then, yeah, final warning, these are, uh, you know, high voltages. Um, this is something you, you certainly can kill yourself. Um, so uh, pay attention. Uh, if I did something dumb, don't do what I did. So thanks for much. Let's go take a look at what we did. Grr.
So we'll walk through the wiring of uh, at least how I wired the, the Yong Yang CNC. Um, I would consider this draft. Uh, I don't think this is going to be permanent. Um, if I do keep it permanent, I'm, I'll put a, you know, use some 2020 aluminum extrusion, probably put a, some clear plexiglass around this um, so you can control all this. But um, I'll probably eventually mount it to, to metal as well. I don't like the idea of it staying on this plywood. Um, it's probably fine, but this was actually pretty easy to mock up. So that's why I have it on plywood right now. Um, again, my goal was to see if I could get this particular controller to work. Um, I actually have this running. Um, I haven't cut anything with it, but uh, all my limits are working. Um, and we'll walk through that in the, uh, another video. Um, but I'll start by, you know, how I wired this. I created schematics for this as well. So as I'm walking through that, I'll post those. Um, but we'll start with the uh, power distribution. Um, so I have my main power coming in. Um, so uh, this is actually an old uh, boat shore power cord. Um, I, I am running this at uh, 220, 240 volt, you know, whatever it takes. Um, in the US, um, that would typically mean that you've got uh, two live lines. So L1 black, L2 um, is typically red. Um, again, this particular cable that I'm using has a black, white, and a ground. Um, so I am keeping those cover colors, but um, I've marked everything um, red. Um, I'm actually going to get some red electrical tape to make that a little bit more permanent. Um, so I have uh, incoming power here. Um, it's going into, this is a, a 30 amp uh, circuit breaker mounted on a DIN rail. Um, so I have uh, white or, you know, supposedly red going in this side, um, coming back out to a terminal block where I've got three options, three terminals here. Um, again, I've kept it white, but I'll, you know, in, in 110 or 120, that would have been fine. Um, 240, I probably should have this as red, um, but again, I'll, I'll mark it all as red. Um, so incoming, this is actually BL2. If it were 110, it would be neutral. Um, and then I have three wires, uh, three whites going to um, this power supply, this power supply, and then this power supply. So this is for the uh, y-axis. This is for, so y, one, and two. So there's two motors running off of this, x and z. Um, again, two motors running off of this. Both of these are uh, mean well 36 volt power supplies. Um, and then the smaller one is a 24 volt um, just for this controller. Um, again, um, mean well power supply. Uh, I believe Yong Ying, you know, supplied some actually decent uh, power supplies for this. Um, so that's the line two or um, red. Um, it's white here, but it'll eventually be red. Um, we have uh, line one, the black. Uh, again, going in here, going through this circuit breaker around to this terminal block. Um, and then similar to these wires, I have black wires running to all three power supplies. Um, and then the ground, um, I take to this ground block. Um, I'll be using this ground block. Um, I, I've run all these power supplies to this ground. Uh, I'll run, you know, a ground to the machine. Um, I'm actually grounding out uh, this shielded cable on all of the limit switches. So that'll actually run to this ground. Um, and then um, I've encased it all in here. Um, so that all of my main power and things that could potentially kill you um, are, are well protected, covered. Um, so this is actually how I, um, it's not plugged in now, but this is actually how I switch the whole machine off and on. Uh, so that covers my basically incoming power. Um, so that goes to these power supplies. Um, these power supplies um, also run over to um, each of my stepper drivers. So. Again, on the y-axis, um, I'm running two over to this one and this one. So this would be like y1, y2. Um, and then my x and z-axis are running off of um, these two right here. Um, pretty simple. Um, again, you can take a look at a wiring diagram for how I have all of these wired. Um, the controller power supply, uh, pretty simple, just runs over here to this 24 volt in um, for this particular controller. So that covers uh, all of my power and power distribution. So 
So next, let's talk about um, limit or sorry, uh, stepper controller wiring. Um, so again, all of the power comes from these power supplies. Um, it's going to each of these uh, connector blocks right here. Um, so 20 volt or 36 volt in. Uh, this actually goes to um, the stepper motor. So these four wires, again, take a look at the schematic for examples on those. Um, this is actually the encoder. So these are closed loop um, stepper motors. Um, so there is an encoder kind of watching for the position. Um, it does some cool things like if it stalls out, it'll send an alarm out. Um, I currently don't have those alarms wired. Um, I do have plans to wire them into um, the e-stop circuit. Um, not sure if that's correct. Uh, leave me some comments below if you think that that should be different. Um, but I'm hoping that if the alarm tricks on, trips on each one of these controllers, it'll actually hit my limit switch control. Um, and then this last set of wires actually goes to the controller itself. Um, again, take a look at the wiring for that. So. Again, power coming from these power supplies. Um, this actually goes out to the stepper motor itself. This actually goes to the encoder. And these are actually what's going to the um, controller itself. So these actually go all the way over here. Um, and it just mostly repeats for each one of those. The difference is just where you plug it in. Um, I did run, as far as the controller is concerned, I ran you know, X, Y, and Z. Um, I did my Y2 or the other Y motor, Y axis um, on uh, the A axis. So whenever you see me refer to the A axis, it's actually my Y2 motor. So that covers stepper wiring. Um, Let's talk about um, limit switches um, and e-stops and probes um, and relays. Um, so I do have, um, this is effectively my limit, limit switch block. Um, there's kind of three sections here. There's, um, you know, voltage, um, you know, positive voltage, negative voltage. So this is 24 volts. This is uh, zero volts. Um, and then I'll, I'll actually use this as a ground. Um, I'm actually going to run my stepper shielding to this ground, and then I'll, I'll ground all the way back over to this, this particular ground block. Um, but for all of my limit switches, um, I run them to uh, basically a 24 volt uh, positive block, um, a negative block, um, and then the actual sense wire um, or signal wire um, I run into the controller. Um, I made a mistake on these, and I'll actually probably correct that. Um, ideally, I'd like these yellow wires to be black, um, but f just the way that I actually uh, soldered them and heat shrink them to the actual uh, limit switches, um, I'm not going to undo all of that right now. But um, I will ultimately change that when I ultimately redo this board. But uh, for now, I'll pretend these yellow wires are black, so it should be black, um, and then when we talk through these connections, um, pretend those are yellow. Um, again, I'll, I'll ultimately switch those. So again, positive and negative actually running to a block for each one of the steppers. Um, this uh, negative or zero volts actually goes over to here um, on the controller. Um, similar thing for a positive, it goes to one of the 24 volts outs on the controller. Um, and again, all the signal wires go in, but Again, I'll have a schematic. You can actually see all that, how I wired all of this. And again, I am, I'm open to criticism or, or comments uh, and compliments. So um, if I did something horribly wrong, please let me know. I'll correct it so that everybody else knows as well. Um, emergency stop. This is actually the very first thing that I wired up and made sure was working. Uh, I recommend you do the same thing. Um, so I went through a lot of tests to verify that this would shut things down and i'm glad i did because i needed it several times um, but effectively this just runs to um, a, a zero volt here um, and then i have the other connector from the e-stop running into it's basically input number five or e-stop 
um, on the controller. Um, I do have a, a probe. Um, so I have a probe that we can actually use to effectively zero the X, X Y, and you know it'll tap off on the, the actual Z. Um, I have that probe wired to input number four, and again, the ground is actually going to, to zero volts for um, the probe. So I believe that covers limits, emergency stop, and probe. Um, last thing, and this isn't fully tested, I do know that it turns on, but I haven't wired it up to um, an actual tool. My plan is actually, now that I've fried uh, poor spindle here, um, see another video for that experience. Um, but now he's gone. Um, I've got a, a Bosch router mounted in the machine. So I'll probably use this relay to turn on the router. Um, but in short, I've got um, this red on the input side of the relay going to output number three. Um, I have uh, negative going to zero volts on the controller. Um, once I wire up the router, um, I'll probably mount it. My router is uh, 110 volts. The rest of this is 220. Um, so I'll probably have a, a separate inline for 110 power. Um, but I'll wire the, the black or line um, to this relay on the way to the actual tool. Um, white will just go to the tool and ground will go to ground. So as this relay kicks on, it'll close the connection on, the, on that black and, and turn on whatever tool is connected to it. Um, again, uh, not entirely tested, but I have verified that from the controller and from Mach 3, I can actually turn this on. Um, I believe that's it. Again, please consider, uh, you know, all of this draft. Um, I've got a ton of cables that, you know, you can probably see here. Um, as I work to mount this on the machine, I'll, I'll redo those. But again, my goal was to get this running, um, which I have been able to do um, pretty largely. It's um, configured the way that I like it. Um, but as soon as I probably cut someone with it, I'll probably tear it apart and wire in a massive controller. This isn't that bad, but I'm just I'm personally not a fan of, of Mach 3. But that's it. Thanks for watching.